Good evening. There has been an important development in the case for justice for the North Cork 10. Previously, we have reported the historic decision by the DPP to give victims of clerical abuse a reason for not prosecuting alleged perpetrators after pressure was put on by the support groups RAT and ITCCS in the form of a letter they sent to the DPP. Further progress was made by these groups when a psychotherapy session organised by Archbishop Dermot Clifford for the priests of Klein in Cork City was cancelled. And tonight we are reporting on the news that the Gardaí have resubmitted eight files to the DPP in the case of Father B. We are now going over to the seat of the Diocese of Klein to our religious affairs correspondent, Jerry O'Donovan. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I have the founder of Religious Abuse Truth, Kevin Flanagan, on the phone. Good evening, Kevin. Okay, sure. Kevin, what are your initial thoughts on the latest developments in the case of the North Cork 10? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and over the moon that the DPP have, is actually out to reconsider this case, the case. Because initially, we were told that you cannot, you cannot contact the DPP to reconsider a case. And he's out there reconsidering this case. And it's ironic. And there's history out there being made in this, in, in, in all this. Because the, just after we, just after the DPP received their letter, the DPP came out with a statement saying that he is now going to give a reason why cases are being thrown out. That's never happened before. And, and I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the result of the case going back to the DPP. And now let's say, let's fight and let's get the justice. Well, Kevin, it seems that the pressure from the support groups RAT and the ITCCS is having an impact on this case. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm almost sorry, Jerry. I'm almost sorry, Jerry. I'm, I have to be honest. People, are, people keep saying, ah, oh, this will never happen, that will never happen. If we put enough pressure on these people, these people are going to crumble. These people are crumbling. I've, I've stood in front of bishops. And to see big grown bishops, men, bishops, with tears in their eyes, makes it all worthwhile. And the groups that, the, the, the two groups that's, that's involved, we're only small in numbers, but we made massive changes. We made the people, the, the women in Cork, can't believe. They thought that they, they were finished. They thought that they'd never go back to the to their courts. Now they have an opportunity to get to the courts. And all they want, that's all they women want. They want to be able to see that man, what, whether he gets a sentence or whether he doesn't, that's irrelevant. But I'll tell you, We'll be at the cars the day they're up. We'll be there to support them. And that's what the women need. From your experience, Kevin, and for the benefit of viewers, how long will it take the DPP to make a judgment in this case? Uh, well, I'll say, I'll say it'll be very quick. I'll say he's going to, t he's going to send it to the courts. Because I can't tell you how we can call it back. Now, it could be, this could be, this could, the reason I say, one of the reasons I can say here is, is with the client report you have. And I, and I believe that's one of the reasons why, 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 why the case has come back. To let them sit, to let people, to let the, the people see that these are trying to do something. But these are doing nothing. All these people are doing is covering up, covering up, covering up. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, from day one of this, the church has done absolutely nothing for the victims. It's all cover up, cover up. It's all about the church, the church. They blamed everything. They, they blamed, they blamed homosexuality. They blamed you name it. They blamed it. But the blame has to rely, has to lie with them. And the one thing I will say, and I've said this, and I'd like people to, to listen to this point. Let's stop calling.
calling this child abuse. And let's stop calling this the victims and victims and survivors. Let's call these people fucking criminals what they are. And that's what they are. Absolutely criminals. And the sooner the better they know that they are criminals, the better. Now, as far as RAT is concerned, what is the next step? Will the vigils continue? Well, we're having one on Saturday in, in, in Cork again, on the side of the table of Cork, if anybody sees this, come out and join us. We'll be down on Saturday. We hope to go from there, then we hope to go to uh, Mitchellstown. And we hope, in the not too distant future, that we can go to Mallow. And we can have a victory celebration for these ten brave women. We have also received a statement from Reverend Kevin Annett, founder of the ITCCS, by voicemail, which we will now broadcast. Here is what Kevin had to say. Hello, this is Kevin Annett, January 24th, 2011, and I'm speaking to you from Canada as the Acting Secretary of the International Tribunal into Crimes of Church and State. We are allied with Religious Abuse Truth and the other groups in Ireland that are working with the North Cork 10. First of all, I want to completely endorse the campaign that's attempting to bring justice to the matter, that's attempting to get the Director of Public Prosecutions in Ireland to take seriously their own mandate and to prosecute those priests and bishops and others who are responsible for the rape and the violence against innocent children and adults in Ireland. I first of all want to say that as part of this campaign I'm very proud of the successes that you've been able to achieve especially forcing the DPP to open the file and to go after brother, uh, Father B, the accused in question. We are very concerned about the fact that the DPP up till now and the Irish government and courts appear to be colluding with the Roman Catholic Church in concealing known child rapists. That is a complete violation of justice and obstruction of justice and when our ITCCS tribunal convenes in London in September, we intend to look into the matter more seriously and address in a public way the apparent collusion of the Irish government with the Roman Catholic Church in this matter. We're very encouraged that public pressure and the protests of your groups have been able to force this change, and we look forward to continuing involvement in this matter. I personally will be arriving in Ireland during the spring. The date isn't set yet, but when I arrive I will be working with Jerry O'Donovan, uh, Dave O'Brien, Kevin Flanagan and the others working with the North Cork 10 and I hope at that time to meet all of you and to bring this matter to full public and international attention. Our website is hiddenfromhistory.org and I wish to thank you all for your bravery and commitment in struggling for justice. If you wish to reach me, my email is hiddenfromhistory at yahoo.ca. Thank you very much. Carry on. Good luck. We're all watching you and we're all behind you. I would now like to hand you back to the studio. Good night from Cork. So there you have it. It seems the sustained pressure from the support groups is going to continue to further the case for justice for the North Cork 10. That has been our world today. Until the next time, good night.